Shalom, most high and Christ bless. Shalom, most high Christ bless. Good morning to you all. Give it a few minutes for everybody to log on. Yes, sir. It has been a while. Good to see everybody. Shalom, shalom. Good morning to you all. How was the sound in the video? Give a few more minutes. Wait for more people to log in. <clears throat> All praises. Hmm. There is no notification. Good old Facebook. Lord have mercy. Well, I'll definitely wait a few more minutes now if I, after hearing that. Man. It's always something. <sighs> oh, it just posted. <laughs> oh, God. Lord have mercy.
Now I see more people log in. Just got the notice. Oh Lord. Lord help me. I'll wait a few more minutes because the notification from my when I what I understand just went out. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> you know, the devil has many devices to try to keep the word from our people. But he must endure. All right. Um, all right. We're going to set up the prayers. Face Jerusalem. Brothers, uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Oh. Shalom, shalom, most high in Christ, bless. Good morning to you all. Good to see everyone. Hold on, let me read this disclaimer. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus 5 and 1. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Okay. Um, brothers, I need to scribe. I need a brother to scribe. I need a brother to scribe. I understand it's delay, so I'll, I'll wait. Um, but again, this is a call to the brothers. To, I need a brother to scribe. I hope everybody had a uh, had a good week so far in its captivity. And thank the Lord for his mercies. Hmm.
Oh, all praises. Josiah, Brother Josiah, scribe on that. All praises for you. All right. Uh, the title of this class is Be in Pain and Bring Forth the Kingdom. Again, the title is Be in Pain and Bring Forth the Kingdom. That's the title of the, of the class. All right. Oh, we're going to start at Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written in aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the scriptures were written aforetime for our learning. That's all the scriptures. We have to learn from them the good and bad examples that are written in the scriptures about our people that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope are we going to address that hope later on in the class so see why did i choose this topic Let's go to Micah 4 and 10. Micah 4 and 10. Um, a lot of us came from Christian, the Christian church. So we're raised in Christianity. And of course, they don't believe in the Bible. I don't care what they say. I was raised in the Christian church. And they got the prosperity doctrine. All these doctrines uh, speak soft and all that. Nah. But when you come to the truth, this is what is required. Micah 4 and 10, be in pain. And labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. And thou shalt go even into, into Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. I'm going to deal with the first part. Be in pain. What are some of the things that cause us pain in this truth? That's a question. Especially for the brothers, but it's a question. What are some of the things that bring us pain in this truth? I'm going to see your answers. Lack of knowledge of the Bible. Hmm. Losing family and friends, so-called. Hmm. Family going against you. God in your household. Losing family members to Christianity. <laughs> Not keeping the laws. Hmm. These are some good answers. Really, really good answers. Children. Mm hmm. Just a couple, a few more. 
But these are some of the things that bring us pain in this truth. Going against the laws and commandments. Amen to that. Temptation. Very good. All of those things. All of those things bring us pain. Um, but Christianity, especially, has made our men weak and simps. So we must relearn how to be men. We must relearn how to be men. Um, especially, let me get, let me get this. Hold on a minute. Uh, go to Sirach thirty-six and eight. The book of Sirach thirty-six and eight. We're gonna we're gonna start there. We're gonna go there and read there. Sirach 36 and 8. Make the time short, remember the covenant, and let them declare thy wonderful works. I'm going to read that again. Make the time short, remember the covenant, and let them declare thy wonderful works. Make the time short. Yes, Lord. Make it short. If you if you notice, the days are flying by. That was one of our prayers. Make the time short. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, let's go to Matthew. Matthew four seventeen. Matthew 4 and 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. One more time, I'll read it. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of, ha the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, what do y'all think that means? What do you think that means? The kingdom, kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, any others? What do you think that means? Mm-hmm. So last days, any time now, yes, yes, the kingdom is near, time is running short here in Babylon. We need to get right quickly. Amen to that. Yes, that's all correct. All right, so the time is short. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We got to get busy to bring forth the kingdom. Um... If you notice, there are some who love it here in Babylon. So there's no sense of urgency. We have to have a sense of urgency. Because Christ said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's near. Let's go to 1 Maccabees. Three and forty-one. 
First Maccabees 3 and 41. I like that. I like that, Brother Benjamin. The kingdom is waiting for men to do the work to bring it forth. Wow. I like that. First Maccabees 341. This is it says, and the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. A power also of Syria and of the land of the Philistines joined themselves unto them. Now when Judas and his brethren saw that the miseries were multiplied and that the forces did encamp themselves in their borders, for they knew how the king had given commandment to destroy the people and utterly ab abolished them. Then said one to another, let us restore the decayed state of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. Hmm. Y'all see what's going on here? The men understood that they were in a war and they have to fight for the people. It's no time to take a break, relax. They had a sense of urgency to fight for the people. Let's go to Acts 1 and 6. Acts 1 and 6. Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore were come together, the acts of him, acts of Christ, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Hmm. Restore again, again, to, the, to Israel. Restore again. Um, hold on a minute. I'm gonna look up that word, restore. Restore, bring back a previous right, practice, custom, or situation. Re reinstate, Be bring the synonyms or reinstate, put back, reinstitute, reestablish. So I'm going to read Acts 1 and 6 again. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Hmm. So what did the disciples understand and what were they looking for? They were expecting Christ to come back to restore the kingdom back to them back then. So us knowing that and realizing that this is what the Lord requires of us. Go to Job. No, I'm sorry. Let's go to second address. Second address two and thirteen. Second address two and thirteen. Can everybody still hear? Oh, 
Okay. Second Edges 2 and 13. Go, and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Hmm. I'm going to read that again. Go, and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Wow, wow, wow. So, one of our prayers is make the time short. Bring us the kingdom. Give us the kingdom back. Because we lost it. Y'all realize that we were given the kingdom the first time? We were given it. And like ungrateful children, we didn't appreciate it. Now we, we have to work for it now. Now we're in captivity. Hmm. Now we're in captivity. Go to Job 40 and 7. Job 40 and 7. Job 40 and 7. Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I'm reading again. Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Hmm. So the Lord demands us to gird up our loins now like a man, an Israelite man keeping the commandments. And mm, I'm going to, hold on, hold on a minute. And what are those loins? Let's go to first Peter one thirteen. First Peter one thirteen. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when it says gird up thy loins, it's gird up thy loins of, the, of thy mind. Because in this captivity, we have been destroyed by Christianity, religions, politics, all these philosophies of the world, of Babylon the Great. So we are required, the Lord demands of us to gird up the loins of our mind. Let's, um, let's talk about that for a minute. Because uh, like I said before, in Christianity, they destroyed us. Our minds have been destroyed. So, um, so they, they brought up our men, soft, weak, and we were in the key sweat era. The, y'all know what I'm talking about. The key sweat era. Begging 
worshiping the woman. But the Lord says, gird up thy loins now like a man. That time is over. It's over. Um, hold on a minute. I didn't, I didn't have these, these scriptures in my notes, but I have to bring it out. Um, by the way, if y'all listen to Clubhouse, Lord have mercy. That's an indication that shows what Christianity has done to our people. But the Lord is bringing up a new breed of men. All praise to the Most High. He's bringing up a new breed of men. Um, let's go to the book of Isaiah 58 and 1. Isaiah 58 and 1. So these weak, mealy mouth pastors. Ah, oh God. Weak, mealy mouth pastors that kowtow to women. Isaiah, Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up, lift up thy voice now like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So the Lord's raised up um, so the real prophets are back on the earth. And the real prophets are going to tell you like it is. They're going to warn you like it is. Thus saith the Lord. They're not going to uh, talk like Joel Osteen. Hell no. This breed of men on get, are going to get you, give you God's word. Thus saith the Lord. That's why when um, these Christians get on Clubhouse, we shut them down. But we want to hear that. Those days are gone. Go to, back to your church, your weak pastors, and try that on them. That's not going to work here. You're not going to out-talk us. You're not, not going to give us your feelings. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Um, Romans 12 and 2. Let's go to Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to read it again. And be not conform, sorry, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed, being changed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What's the will of God? Let's go to Psalms 40 and 8. Psalms 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. 
So the will of God is his laws. The law. The law. But you know, Christians hate the law. So, in our repentance, we have to do the will of God, which is the law. Uh, Y'all don't speak with love. Let's see. 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John 5 and 3. It's why you always hear them say, especially the women, sorry, got to bang on you sisters. I think, I feel like I think, I think, I think, I think, wait a minute. Who gives a damn what you think? What does the Bible say? 1 John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's the love of God, keeping his commandments. That's the love of God. Again, keeping his commandments. Uh, stay in 1 John. 1 John 2 and 3. 1 John 2 and 3. So love is keeping God's commandments. 1 John 2 and 3. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So that's a um, stipulation requirement to show that we know God if we keep his commandments. Verse four, he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So what do Christians teach? You don't have to keep the law. The law is, law is done away with. So that means that y'all liars. Starting with a pastor. Starting with your reverend. Reverend Porkchop. So the Christian church has read and raised up these demons to hate God, to hate Christ, to hate the Bible. So we have to understand that we are in a war. We are in a spiritual war. And like it says in uh, 1 Maccabees 3 and 4, 43. I don't, you don't have to go there, but I'm going to read it again. 3 and 43. They said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. the decayed estate of our people. So we have to realize that our people are in a decayed estate. So we as men must stand up in our repentance, stand up like men. Hmm. Stand up like men. So hold on a minute. Huh? Some just just some just hit me. Let's go to Genesis forty nine. And 
and 8. Genesis 49 and 8. I didn't have this in my notes. Genesis 49 and 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. They ha thy hand shall be on the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So, um, especially in the 60s, it was Judah, the tribe of Judah, that led the charge against our enemies. And then the our other tribes followed, but it was Judah that led that charge. Verse nine, Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, thou art going up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? That's a question. That's a question for y'all. Who's going to rouse Judah up? What say you? Who's going to rouse Judah up? Who's going to rouse Judah up? Because our uh, civil rights leaders, they're old, tired. They're not telling our people who they are and to keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. So who's going to rouse Judah up? I'll wait for a couple more answers. Okay. All right. Let's let's read verse 10. Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Who is that? Who is that talking about? All right. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and verse 4. Isaiah 55, verse 4. Behold, I have given him for a witness of the people a leader and commander of the people. Who is that? Christ, the black Messiah. So by the spirit of the Lord, he's raising up men. He's bringing, he's brought back the prophets to get our people right through his word, through his spirit. Um, first Samuel 10 and 6. First 
1 Samuel 10 and 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. You see what the Word of God does? One more time. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. Through the Spirit of the Lord, we're going to be changed into another man. Hmm. Hmm. So, in our repentance, we have to learn how to be men again. Here's something else that brings us pain. Let's see. Uh, let's go to Luke 14 and 26. Luke 14, 26. Luke 14, 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So what Christ is talking about here is not literally hate, hate their ways that go against the Lord. But out of all those that's listed here, father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters, and his own life also, which one brings us the most pain out of those? Which one of those brings us the most pain? Out of all those things, okay, all right, hmm. a few more. Boom, Brother Olada. Have to, uh, you have to sacrifice, man, this thing goes, goes, goes fast. S sacrifice everything for Christ. Hating ourselves. I wouldn't say hating ourselves. Mm -mm. Is hating our life also. Our life in the world. Our wants and desires in the world that are not after Christ. Remember, it, it says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So, here's an example. Um, we have a, I don't know, we want it to be famous, a celebrity in this world. Christ says, that comes first, you can't follow me. So we, we saw family, mother, wife, children, is your own life. Um, 
It's your own life. Let's see. Here's an example. Uh, let's go to Acts. Acts 20 and verse. I'm going to jump down. 16. And I'm going to jump. Acts 20 and 16. Acts 20 and 16. For Paul had determined to sail to Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. What does this show about Paul? He was keeping the day of Pente Pentecost. He didn't want to miss that day. Hmm. Watch what happens in your congregations on the day of Pentecost, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks. Just watch. Watch and see who's missing. Hmm. Um, I'm going to drop down to verse 19. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Here is talking about the Pharisees. It's talking about the Pharisees. And, and how I kept back nothing that was proper unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. The Greeks are Israelites that were keeping, that were not keeping Israelite customs. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bond in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Do you understand um, Paul went to Jerusalem not knowing what's going to happen to him because the Pharisees were after him? It's a mind we have to have. Verse 22. Verse 22. That's, yeah, was 22. I'm going to read it again. And now behold, I go bond in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save to that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Hmm. Verse 24, here's the point. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with, course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So... Why did I read that? Because as men in this truth, we have to understand that we have to give it all to the Lord for the gospel. That our life means nothing without the Lord and do the work. Apostle Paul showed that. We have to show that. Remember, what some other things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Did we forget that? 
Hmm. Because who brought us in his truth? Let's go to John 15 and 16. John 15 and 16. John fifteen sixteen. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and that so whatever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So... Christ chose us. That's another um, thing I despise in, in Christianity. I chose the Lord. No, you didn't. Christ chose us. You chose Satan, but Christ chose us to bring forth fruit. What is the fruit? Um, hold on. Let's start off at Proverbs 12 and 12. Proverbs 12 and 12. Proverbs 12 and 12. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous leave, yieldeth fruit. I'm going to read it again. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. We'll get more. Let's go to Second Ezra nine and thirty one. Second Edges nine and thirty one. Second Edges nine thirty one. For behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you and ye shall be honored in it forever. I love that scripture. I'm going to read it again. For behold, I sow my law in you, and it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored in it forever. Do you understand that if we keep the law, the commandments of God, and the faith of Christ that we get the kingdom and we live forever? Hmm. Just think about that for a minute. Just think about that. Um, let's go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy two and one. Just start at verse one. Second Timothy two and one. Second 
Second Timothy 2 and 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. It says be strong. Not weak, not faint-hearted, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Hmm. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So what is a soldier? Why does he call us soldiers? Because we're in spiritual warfare. Gird up thy loins now like a man. When you realize what you're into, either you're going to cut and run, or you're going to endure. Many have cut and run, but are you going to endure? That's a question. Read verse three again. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Um, in this truth, we're going to go through some things. Endure hardness. Hmm. We're going to go through it. Verse four. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So Christ chose us to be soldiers, to fight for the people, fight for him. Give it all we got for him. We had our time in the world. We had our time. Now it's the Lord's time. The Most High said, you know what? You had your fun. I have mercy on you. I should have killed you, but I have mercy on you. So I sent my son to die for you. And now you want to give it all to me. Hmm. Oh, you thought um, this is going to be a little cakewalk? No. This is war. Spiritual war. And the first war, first battle, is with ourselves. That's with, with, it's with ourselves. Our sins our thoughts um so we can't get caught up with the affairs of this life uh, i'm getting somewhere else go to second address second address 14 and verse 13. 2nd Edges 14 and 13. We have to understand that we're soldiers for Christ. He chose us. Second Edges 14 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. 
Comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. So the first step, it says, Now therefore set thine house in order. Thy house, our house, starts with us. It starts with us, the men. I know uh, what the world says, what the media says. Ah, uh, who cares? It starts with us. So we have to set ourselves in order first, and then our wife, our wife, our children. Then we can go teach others. Otherwise, we're hypocrites. So we have to set our house in order, set ourselves in order by keeping the commandments in our repentance. It says, comfort such of them as be in trouble. Our people are in trouble. Do we understand that? Our whole nation is in trouble. So we have to get ourselves in order so we can fight for our people, fight for their minds. Verse 14, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature. Hmm. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Hold this. We're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 14. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 14. Wisdom of, Psalm, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. I'm going to read it again. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. So, when you're not keeping the commandments, your thoughts are miserable. And your devices are uncertain. Let's stay in Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 15. Wisdom of Solomon, first chapter, 15th verse. We just read that the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Let's, let's see what this is. Wisdom of Psalm 1 and 15. For righteousness is immortal. Righteousness is keeping the commandments. Is immortal. What does that mean? By us keeping the commandments in the faith of Christ, we get the kingdom and live forever and be one of those immortals. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra 14 and verse 15 now. Second Ezra 14 and 15. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. Let's go to verse uh, 34. Second answers 14 and 34.
Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. Y'all see that? Verse 34 again. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. So our thoughts, we got to put it away. What we think, put it away. Subdue, subdue those thoughts. Follow righteousness. Follow righteousness. Let's go to Acts 14 and 22. Acts 14 and 22. Acts 14, 22. That's something just popped in my head. I, I won't. Acts 14, 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. We'll read it one more time. Confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Um, Micah 4 and 10 is similar. Be in pain and labor to bring forth the kingdom. Then the Lord will deliver us and save us. But before we get the kingdom, that we through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. Now, let's look up the definition of tribulation. Let's look up the definition of tribulation. A cause of great trouble or suffering. A cause of great trouble or suffering. Here are the synonyms. Problems, troubles, difficulties, misfortunes, trials, tribulations, pain, suffering. So we have to go through it. Much tribulation. Much tribulation. Let's go to Baruch. Four and twenty one. Baruch 4 and 21. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. We can't do it on our own. We got to wait on him. Verse 42. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you, and joy is come unto me 
from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. Hmm. Uh, let's go to Romans, Romans three and five. I mean, five and three, Romans five and three, Romans five and three. Yeah, I, I love it too. <laughs> Brother says, love that book. Yeah, I do. I do too. We're going to come back here though. Um, Where did I say go? Oh, Romans 5 and 3. Romans 5 and 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Verse, I'm going to read verse 5 again. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. You understand that? Hmm. Now let's go to Baruch 4.22. Let's read that again. Baruch 4.22. Remember, hope maketh not ashamed. Remember that. Baruch 4.22 For my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you and joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. It says soon come upon come unto us soon soon so we've been, been in captivity for over 400 years over 400 years and the Lord says, soon. Hmm. Verse 24. Like as now, the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. So shall they see shortly your salvation from our God which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. Y'all hear these words? 24, I'm going to read 24 again. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so, they, so shall they see shortly, shortly, Your salvation from our God will shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. Verse 25. My children, suffer patiently. You see what the Lord says? Suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from God. For thy enemy 
have persecuted thee, but shortly shalt thou see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck shortly. Shortly. Suffer patiently. But shortly. Y'all y'all hearing this? So in the Lord's eyes, he says, shortly. Be patient. Suffer patiently. There were words like soon. Shortly. Um, let's go to Jeremiah 17 and 14. Jeremiah 17 and 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Lord, Lord, Lord. So the, we have to ask the Lord to heal us, to save us. Heal and save us. So no one is saved yet. No one. Let's go to Matthew 24 and verse 13. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I'm going to read it again. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved be saved, shall be saved, which is future tense. No one saved now. No one saved yet. We have to endure until the end. The same shall be saved. That's a class. Any questions pertaining to class? Any questions pertaining to class? <laughs> All praise to the Most High. All praises. All praise to the Lord. Nope. Our question is, will we know uh, when we know when the 144 will be sealed? Nope. 
Um, I, I don't know if y'all watched Bishop's class two Sabbaths ago. He dropped a nugget. I think it was two Sabbaths ago. When he said some of the 144,000 have already been sealed. I'll leave that one alone. All right. Any more questions? No more questions. All right. Uh, Brother Josiah, thank you for scribing. All praises for you, brother. All praises for scribing. Um, donate to the Booster Club. Donate, donate, donate. Because the gospel still has to be preached to all the world. So donate to the Booster Club. If anybody knows the uh, email, what's this? Anybody knows the email to um, I'm, I don't want to give the wrong email. But donate, donate. Donate. Because when Christ returns, game over. The captivity is over. So let's do the work to bring forth the kingdom. Uh, send up prayers for our leadership that the Lord will continue to bring his word to them so that they can feed us. Send up prayers for all Israel that are keeping the commandments of God. No, it's, it's different email. Yeah, that's a different email. Uh, anybody know the email to fundraiser? I mean, uh, Booster Club. Anybody know that email address? Hold on a minute. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and get that email address before this class. Hold on. All right, I got it. I don't know what happened here. Oh, I can't, I can't post. Ugh, won't let me post the email. It's iyc.fundraising at israelunite.org. Again. <sighs> iyc.fundraising at israelunite.org. The damn devil. Facebook. I'm talking about Facebook. Won't let me post it. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, whatever. All right, y'all send up the prayers for the commandment keepers. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Josiah. Is that different? Yeah, that's different, Josiah. Oh, small brother. Thank you. Thank you. Send the prayers for the commandment keepers, those that love Christ, love the Lord, and love their people. All right. Study, pray, and apply. And with that, say shalom, most kind of Christ bless. Love y'all.